everyone, it's Jennifer Dowd with Dowd Vocal Studio and Artist Development, and I'd like to introduce you to something I like to call hot buttons. Now, a hot button to me is something that, as a spectator, is pulling me away from the, the meaning of the music or pulling me out of being fully engaged with the character in that particular performance or uh, pulling me away from the story. And there are three that I wanna cover with you today, although there can be more. So in discussing these, we're going to start with my number three, and we'll work up to the one that I find that is most prevalent, particularly with young artists. So let's start with number three. So number three on my list is using the same gesture over and over again. And hopefully you're starting out the way that everyone uh, recommends that you work with lyrics. And that is to put them all in one paragraph and to work them as a monologue. If you're doing that, then hopefully you're discovering different ways to uh, approach the lyrics and to perform the lyrics in your song, but particularly finding different ways to approach the repeated material that is within those lyrics so that you can uh, discover different ways or more emphatic ways to uh, approach those repeated uh, passages. Uh, the only caveat I would say to using a gesture over and over again is maybe perhaps in a comedic song where that is part of the butt of the joke. Um, and I would even seek to maybe vary that at the very, very end because we're all expecting you to do it the same way every time. And that might be even raising the bar on what is already funny uh, when you twist us up a little bit on the end. So, number three, don't reuse the same gesture. So, number two on my list deals with diphthongs. Now, there are diphthongs and triphthongs, and we approach them the same way. A diphthong is a, a vowel pair that supposedly work as a unit. Now, I do not believe they work as a unit because you can definitely feel when you say or sing a word like day, the difference between one vowel and the next. Certainly, when you sing a sustained pitch, the goal is to sustain the first of those vowel pairs and almost treat the second of the vowel pair as a consonant. Now, we know in singing that vowels make the music and consonants make the words. And when we are singing a sustained word, we should be looking to keep that vocal channel relatively the same shape throughout the uh, sustaining of the word or the pitch. Um, quite frequently, you'll see uh, my rule number two here broken quite often by uh, singers, very famous singers, very capable singers who are in their senior years. Now, why is this? It's usually dealing with uh, breath support issues or um, tension or um, atrophied muscles that no longer adduct the way that they should that sometimes create the situation where the singer feels like they have more control on more closed vowels. So um, when you have a word like day and you get to the end, a e a e we want to sustain that first vowel sound and put the E part of that vowel pair on the cutoff, day, and end it. Oftentimes what you hear is this, day, like that, and the jaw comes up and grips the second part of that vowel pair. Uh, one of the most stealth ones to deal with is O because the lips will round around that um, second part of the vowel and the jaw will very uh, stealthfully come up and you'll be in the second part of that vowel pair before you know it. So whenever you're holding a word like 
No! Make sure that you're holding that first vowel sound for the duration of the pitch. Now there's also one other thing to watch out for. When you are particularly moving from one note to the next and there's only two notes that are involved, like day, do the same thing. Uh, oftentimes people will fall into the trap when a note is moving. Day, like that. Now, unless, unless that's intentional for some kind of stylistic reason, which I can't think of what that would be, again, you want to be keeping the first of that vowel pair throughout the sustaining of that word slash pitch until you're ready to cut it off. That's the golden mean. So, number two, Watch out for those diphthongs. So my number one on the list is something that I see primarily from younger singers, but unfortunately not only from younger singers. And it is what I like to call the no-no head. So what is the no-no head? It is when someone, and this kind of harkens back to uh, number three, the, the one that we started with, doing the same gestures over and over again. And when you do a gesture over and over again, particularly without your awareness, we generally call that a mannerism or a master gesture. And uh, so when you're uh, singing something, particularly when you're singing, oftentimes because people haven't done their due diligence in creating the character and doing their lyrics as a monologue and working through the character in a proper way, oftentimes many people will be singing a song constantly shaking their head no throughout the whole entire song. Not where they're just saying something negative, but when they're saying something that's affirmative. So it gets to be quite the attention grabber when you're listening to someone sing a song and they're trying to be emotive, but they're shaking their head no the whole entire time that they're singing. And it gets to be quite annoying to watch. It's something that I see very, very often with a lot of singers. And it is a very difficult thing to break. So there you have it. My three tips for today, or my three hot buttons. Hopefully if you have any of these, or all three, then your awareness has just been raised to start on your journey of fixing it. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.